What's up everybody? Big B here, Brain and Beckrich. Tonight we're training chest. I'm gonna show you guys some of the unique techniques that I like to use, bands, drop sets, negatives. So I hope you guys learn some stuff. Stay tuned, pay attention. All right, movement number one, we did dumbbell incline press. I like to alternate these between barbell and dumbbell, but the dumbbell I like to do a little bit higher volume because our weight is only 120, 125. So the reason being, you can adjust the bench a little bit more too and kind of change the tension on where it's gonna hit the pec. But ultimately, being able to adjust the point of the movement with your hands makes a big difference, especially if you guys have any kind of like shoulder issue or any kind of, you know, impingement on your shoulder or chest, that's gonna really help a lot. Um, essentially, no locking the elbows, retracting the shoulders on the way back, driving the chest out, and coming up about three-fourths the way. I've never been a big advocate of locking out because I feel like if you're contracting properly, you're not gonna be able to lock out your elbows. So you'll see on our movements, it's three-fourths the range of motion and constant tension. Second movement was pec deck. I always like to do a fly movement after a press and vice versa. I rarely do back-to-back -back fly movements or back-to-back -back presses. The pec deck is a good piece because my chest has already been stimulated. I got a lot of blood in there from the first movement and the tension is just really nice on the pec deck that we have here. So I can adjust my seat a little bit. I can really get a good squeeze um, and really take advantage of the control aspect of a machine rather than doing a free weight. Um, this movement can be tricky because a lot of people tend to protract their shoulders when they're coming forward. They do this, which is going to take away from the chest. It puts a lot of pressure on the shoulder, takes tension away from the chest, so you're short shaking yourself. What I like to do is keep the shoulders pinned back and I retract my scapula, so pinching your shoulders back essentially, and I like to imagine like I'm pulling my elbows together rather than pulling my hands together. It may sound silly, but it's actually very effective in terms of mechanics. The further you come across your body, the more you're gonna hit the center of the chest. So remember that, guys. The further you come in, the more it's gonna hit here. That's a lot of times why you see people doing side presses or side uh, pec deck. It's just because the further across you come, the more the center of your chest is gonna be stimulated. Now this movement we do a little bit higher rep range, 12, 15 reps. Alright guys, flat floor press as you would call it. I prefer doing these on the ground, one because it keeps the tension consistent. When you hit the ground, you're not letting your arms relax, you're maintaining tension. But that creates consistency among each rep. So you eliminate any kind of momentum, any kind of bouncing, any ability to create any energy from the bottom as if you were if they're a free weight. So in turn, you're not gonna be able to go quite as heavy, but the tension is gonna be greater, in my opinion. So I can do these on the floor of the bar. You can do them with dumbbells or on a Smith machine. Typically a Smith machine works best. But four sets here, probably 10 to 12 reps uh, until about 80% failure. Fourth movement, incline dumbbell flies, but I add a band to these. I always add a band to my dumbbell flies. And the reason for that, because if you think about doing a dumbbell fly, you get to a certain point on the way up to about right here, and the tension pretty much stops. Basically, all you're doing is just using your shoulder and your chest to pull across, and there's no tension fighting that, that plane of movement here. So adding the band, the further up you go, the further across you go, 
greater the tension is going to be. So also this is kind of nice because if you ever have a difficult time connecting on a dumbbell fly, the band is going to almost put you on a track, like a, like a fixed path. Uh, if you will. So when you're coming down, the band keeps you honest. You're not going to be doing a lot of this, but at the same time, you're going to have even more tension pulling you down and even more tension when you try to come up with it. So this is the same concept as the pec deck. Keep the shoulders back, retract the scapula, and pull your elbows together. This one's a little bit different though because in the band, you're going to have more tension as you go up. So you can actually come up and extend. Just make sure you keep your chest out, guys. Don't roll forward. That's not going to do you any good. Uh, this movie we did four sets, 12, to, uh, 12 reps or more, uh, just depending on the set. Alright guys, hammer strength dip machine. This is a difficult machine, but it's also very effective. Knowing the difference between being able to train triceps and being able to train chest. The difference being for chest, you want to have the elbows angled out more. For triceps, you want to have them angled in. Bending more of the elbows for tries, bending more, a more shoulder flexion for the chest. If you notice, I'm not locking out the bottom. I'm actually coming up, allowing my shoulders to come up, and pressing them down and I'm driving my chest out of the top. I kind of do a little bit of a lean forward on the way up just to get a little bit more shoulder mobility but then as I'm pressing down and driving my chest out. So don't feel like you have to extend the arms all the way and lock out the elbows. Not the case. Uh, if you're having a real good chest contraction you'll find it very difficult to fully extend the arm. So we turn it around into the superset. This one you're not going to be able to get nearly as many reps with. A little more slower control your body's on more of an angle, so you're gonna have more bottom and outside of the chest stimulation here. So um, basically the same principle as we do the first portion of the dip, except for you're turned around and you have to control more because you're not being pressed into your seat. So it's more leverage base. So this is one that I'll tear you up. I do this toward the end. That way I don't have to do as much weight and my pecs are already pretty much fatigued. So I feel this pretty much everywhere. So. We'll do four sets here, almost still failure on everything. 